Welcome to this second tutorial during which we will see how we automatically generate uh, homogeneous refinement meshes uh, with uh, Zephy tools. So let's get back to the site we have defined. Um, we go directly, we can use either predefined or user defined. So let's first use the predefined mesh parameters uh, so we can see that we have access to horizontal resolution, vertical resolution, uh, and smoothing to build either uh, more uh, accurate uh, meshes or more robust mesh. So once uh, we have decided the, the parameters we want to use, we just uh, start building the mesh uh, automatically. By using the default parameter, uh, we can see that uh, we have generated a mesh of about um, a bit more than 800,000 cells. So now we have access also to a, a, a tool to visualize uh, this mesh. So we can also see how the mesh is refined uh, inside the area of interest. Uh, which has been automatically uh, defined based on the entities that we have uh, entered. So um, now that we have uh, one mesh using the predefined parameter, we can also um, decide to build some other meshes using a user-defined parameter uh, by, let's say, for example, uh, doubling the number of cells so that we ha can have a, a, um, a stronger, uh, more accurate mesh uh, for the prevailing directions. It's important to notice that uh, in Zephy CFD uh, we build uh, one mesh that can be used for different uh, directions. We can also um, write all the visualization parameters of the first mesh and directly copy them in the second mesh uh, so that we can, uh, we can make sure that we can uh, have a, a proper comparison between the two meshes that have been built. Uh, we can also decide to uh, to generate a third mesh that we can be that could be used for um, non-prevailing directions. So here again, we we use the user-defined parameter and we control control the num maximum number of cells um, by dividing uh, dividing it by two compared to the first mesh. So uh, let's build a mesh with uh, 400,000 um, cells. So the third mesh is now uh, being built. So we see that now we we will be having uh, three different meshes. Uh, similarly, we can uh, just copy all the visualization parameters uh, from uh, any of the two first mesh in the third me in the third mesh, um, so that we also uh, we have a, a good way of uh, comparing these uh, three generated meshes. So, on this third mesh, we can see that of course uh, the resolution is coarser. Uh, we have a, a limited number of cells, and this mesh will be used for the non-prevailing directions. So once we have these three meshes, uh, we also have um, an option of comparing these three mesh meshes directly by generating a report for uh, all these three meshes. This will be useful to uh, compare each and every parameters of uh, all the different meshes. The report is generated. Uh, we can check all the different characteristics of the three different meshes. So the report starts with a comparison table of the different uh, meshes. So first thing we can see is that uh, for the first mesh that we have generated using the default parameters uh, was giving a, a resolution of uh, 60 meter in the area of interest. Uh, for the second mesh we have managed to increase the resolution to 38 meter and for the third mesh we have decreased the resolution to a, a, a bit more than 100 meter. Why, why are we doing this? It's mostly to, um, to have the, the option of choosing um, a coarse mesh for the non-prevailing direction and a high resolution mesh for the prevailing directions without compromising the total number of cells. Uh, mesh by mesh we see uh, all the different uh, features, all the different visualizations that we have written. Thank you.